We're here at the Church of the Angels in Pasadena to visit a leading expert on seismic waves and earthquakes, Dr. Lucy Jones of the U.S. Geological Survey. She also is an expert on sound waves. What a beautiful piece of music. What are you playing? Hi, this is a small study piece for Viola da Gamba. It's a Renaissance string instrument that I play. As funny as it might seem, what I'm doing here in playing this instrument is a lot like the process in creating an earthquake. I take some string, put it against another string, and have a frictional resistance. I'm pushing down, it's sticking. When I push hard enough, I overcome the friction, and I slide along and release energy that makes the air vibrate. It's a lot like what goes on in an earthquake. You need to have the friction between the strings. If I went and put the wood side down, I don't do as good a job of creating that frequencies, creating that energy as I do when I have a lot of friction. We even add rosin to the bow to make it stick even more and do a better job of generating the waves, generating the sound. There are other things that we can look at that really look the same between this instrument and what goes on in an earthquake. For one thing, notice, I'm producing a pitch. Well, that pitch means that I've got a certain frequency to the wave. And if I have a lower pitch, I have a slower frequency than I do on the high pitch, where I've got a higher frequency. Earthquakes produce a wide range of frequencies as well. What controls the frequency that I'm putting out? Well, if I have a longer string, I get a lower frequency than if I have a shorter string. So the length of the fault controls some of what the frequencies are that are released. If I have one type of material in steel, I get a different material, a different frequency than with the uh, gut material. So the material of the string helps control the frequency as well. Same thing goes on in the earth. A fault rupture measuring the length of a football field will yield a magnitude 4 earthquake and high frequency seismic waves. A 60 mile long fault rupture will produce a magnitude 7 quake with lots of high frequency seismic waves, but also lots of low frequency seismic waves. Seismic waves have different frequencies and buildings also have different frequencies. Tall buildings swing wide and long in low frequency vibrations. Short buildings shake at a rapid rate as they vibrate at high frequency. The fact is that seismic waves are modified, actually distorted, by the rocks they pass through. When seismic waves pass from harder into softer rocks, they slow down. This slowing means they must increase their amplitude to transport the same amount of energy. During earthquakes, the shaking tends to be stronger where seismic waves move slower, but with greater amplitude. Some of the downwarped basins in the Los Angeles region are more than four miles deep. Over time, the basins have filled with sand and mud washed into them by streams. Here is an image of the Los Angeles region with the hard rocks shown in a dark brown color and the soft rocks shown in yellow. Remember, the softer rocks will shake more during a big earthquake. Here the imagery depicts variations in the amplification of shaking throughout the Los Angeles region. The purple areas experience the least amplification of shaking and the yellow areas have the greatest amplification. The point is, shaking is greatly amplified in soft rocks, and shaking is amplified the greatest where the softer rocks are the thicker.